This is Toledo Symphony Lab, a behind-the-scenes look at the world of classical music from WGTE Public Media and your Toledo Symphony. I'm Brad Cresswell. Joining me today are the Toledo Symphony's president and CEO, Zach Vassar, also the TSO's marketing director, Felicia Canny, and on the phone, we have two guests who are joining us from home today. That is Rachel Schultz, Director of Education and Community Engagement for the Symphony, and also the Toledo Ballet's Artistic Director, Lisa Mayer Lang. Welcome, everybody, especially to the two of you that are on the phone line with us. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we're doing something a little different because in the age of uh, COVID-19 and social distancing right now, we are separated here in the studio, just three of us in the studio. We've got our microphones about six feet away from each other. We are as far it's, apart as I think uh, yes. we ever have been. Yes. Yeah. I just have to make sure I can still reach my, my soundboard over here. It's okay you if you can. Stick. Oh, yeah. You need it's, like a... No, yeah. it's working. It's working. But uh, Lisa and Rachel, you both are with us uh, from home right now, so working from home. Uh What's going on with you guys as far as what you have to do for social distancing and, you know, keeping safe and healthy? What what are you doing? What steps are you taking? We're actually doing at the ballet, we're doing virtual classes. We've done some classes via um, Facebook Live. I've done some of those. Michael has done some of those. And our other teachers have actually recorded their classes, which they did last week, or I shouldn't say classes, but a class or two, and we've actually put them on our website. Yeah. So they can, you know, the students in those classes can, can view those classes and actually do the class at home. Well, you know, at, yeah. So I, I want to dive in. I want to dive in more into what you guys are doing professionally, but personally, just at home, uh, you know, Lisa, you, you have a husband, you have kids. I mean, what, what's going on in the household right now? Are you guys keeping six feet away from each other? <laughs> uh, that's that's kind of hard as a family, but, you know, I've always been a germaphobe, so <laughs> this has just kind of made it even worse. So this but, is like uh, heaven for you. You're, it's you're like, wonderful. Finally, everyone's yeah. on my side. Finally, people are washing their hands and not touching each other in their faces, yes. Yeah, um, yeah no, it's a little difficult to, you know, as a family to, to be that far apart, and I guess, you know, you figure if one of us gets it, we all do. Yeah. Um, that's kind of my thinking, but, um, you know, we do our best to obviously constantly wash our hands and my girls are pretty good about that. And Michael always has been too. So, yeah. so we're, you know, we're doing things, uh, you know, working from home and doing the teleconferencing thing and things like that. I have many deadlines. I still have to get that are all up too soon here. And, um, other than that, we're doing a lot of family things, which is really nice because we have a 16, almost 17 year old. And we don't see her very often, so actually having dinners together and, you know, because we work at night. Michael and I work, we teach at night, so we don't, as a family, get to, you know, have the luxury of having dinners together very often. So, so this is, sense, like, this is great for you. You're, you're just soaking it up here. <laughs> well, her daughter might say otherwise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if I'd say it's great, but it's, it's, we're working with yeah. it and how lucky we are to be at home, you know, and... Um, and be with each other and spend more time together. So we actually, I bought some puzzles that last week. Haven't done those in, in decades. How many pieces? Um, <laughs> uh, oh, God, well, over thousands. So I'm just asking. <laughs> Zach just made a face at me. Yeah. Like, you I are can't so competitive. No, no, no. Kenny. I don't even yeah. do puzzles. Here we go. <laughs> but if I, I did, they'd have 10,000 pieces. <laughs> and I'd do it in two before. hours. <laughs> No, no, quite the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we, you know, we're having fun. We don't want to make light of the situation because for many people it's very, very serious. Um, I should mention, if you want to learn more about what's going on in Ohio, they have the website that's coronavirus.ohio.gov. They also have a phone line you can call if you want uh, to talk to somebody directly and get answers about coronavirus uh, here in, in Ohio. And that number is one eight three three four. Ask ODH or 427-5634. You can also go to coronavirus.gov for information on the federal response. Rachel, I want to ask you a similar question. I know you have uh, animals at home. Uh, how are you coping with the uh, with, with the coronavirus situation? Um, I personally am I'm doing all right. Um, we are we're doing our lessons online, so we're lucky that. Most of our lessons are private, so the teachers have been um, working with the students and the families. Um, I am going to be teaching my first lessons from my house today, and I'm hoping my internet connection is okay. I'm a little nervous about that. 
Um, but what has been so great to see is just the the community come together, like the community of teachers. And we're in constant contact about, oh, can you can we do this? Can we try this? And just how creative um, the teachers are being and the musicians of the orchestra. It's just it's been it's been pretty. I don't want to say fun, um, heartwarming. Yeah. About that. Yeah, definitely. And and there's a lot of heartwarming stuff going on around social media in terms of, of videos and, and things that people are sharing. It, you know, in some ways, it's it's kind of ironic that with this idea of social distancing, technology mm-hmm. is still bringing us all together and, and maybe even closer in some ways than before. Um, before we dive into how we're doing that with technology, Rachel, I want to hear the story about your cat giving uh, somebody a raise. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I was working on payroll this morning, and I went to uh, to my workbook to save it before I close it, and it said, do you want to save the changes? And I was like, I didn't make any changes. So I looked, and um, a certain violist received a $30 <laughs> increase. <laughs> you read it. No, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you, you have that version too. I don't think I've ever heard it. Yeah, that's a yeah. smart cat. Yeah, it's a great yeah. cat. It's yeah. a great cat. Now all the violists are like, "Was it me? Was it me?" <laughs> I caught it. Don't, yeah, don't, don't go looking. I caught it. <laughs> Zach is sitting over here thinking, "What? What other things has your cat done?" I got to really talk to Gunther. Yeah, Gunther I is the know. cat. World domination is next. Card. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, this is like yeah. Pinky in the Brain. Yeah, let, let's, the brain of the teenage witch. Let's, oh. <laughs> okay, classical music. Let's get back sure, on sorry, topic sorry, sorry. here. Uh, okay, so can I chime in though with uh, classical music and cat? Can I combine the two? Do it. My head will explode. Okay. Um, so I'm sure. So Brad, you must know the piece "The Monk and His Cat" by Barber. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So that is every time my cat jumps on the keyboard. That is the song that I have going through my head. Really? You want to sing yeah. it for us? The, the computer keyboard <laughs> or the piano keyboard? Oh, no, my actual piano keyboard. Okay. You, yeah. Uh, no, you really don't want me to sing. Uh, well, these are a, a song by Samuel Barber, a text by Irish monks from medieval times, ranging over a few different centuries, and, and yeah. stuff that they wrote like in the margins of, of whatever they were working on at the time. And one guy wrote a poem <laughs> about his cat named Panger, and and everything that he does. So just substitute Anger. Gunther Anger. for Panger and <laughs> and you'll be sad. Yeah. How happy we are alone together. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Social distancing back in the ninth century. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, let me ask you, Felicia, what's going on at home? I mean, you got a husband, you got a couple of little girls at home too. What are you guys doing? You know, you know, when Lisa was describing her her home situation, I was thinking, wow, that is so different <laughs> than mine because yeah. I think uh, my kids are like all over me, and my cat <laughs> is all over me, just one, not the other, <laughs> and uh, and you know, we try to wash hands and everything, but that doesn't seem to work (laughs) right now. We're trying very hard to get them to wash their hands. Well, I I imagine that's a challenge that parents face. Yeah, in general, yes. And and Zach, you have a couple of little kids at home as well, too. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, as as we heard from the governor over the weekend, uh, daycares will be closing um, uh, this week. and Thursday, right? That's right. So uh, as this airs, uh, that's tomorrow. The... um, you know the the challenge in our house is is keeping everything clean, um, providing enough space for us to work. I've been setting up a uh, shop in the kitchen. My wife has an office in our basement that she's been using, so we've socially distanced ourselves like that. Um, but once those kids come home, it will be uh, you know yeah, twenty four hours different story. That's right. Yeah. Um, and I don't say that with with regret or anything. It's just that <gasps> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was Zach in a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, call me Friday. Um, but you know, it's it's uh, it, it, you know, I think there's a silver lining to all of this. You know, thinking about the puzzles that Lisa mentioned, talking about the the ways that technology is bringing us closer. I think we've FaceTimed with more family members and friends than we have in a very long time. Um, I have a, a, a group of friends from high school. We did a, a virtual happy hour on the on Zoom. I've or, seen that. Yeah. Yes. FaceTime wow. or something. Let's try that. You just think about that and, you know, the stuff that we always say that we would do if we had the time, you know, catching up with an old friend, uh, really 
cherishing the the closeness and, and the bonds that we have even if we aren't together and maybe because we 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 don't have the sort of uh, social stimulation that we typically do we hunger for those things mm-hmm. so yeah. I just think it's it's really curious that you know for the first time you know we're, we're I, I'm using FaceTime really for the first time ever I've used it in the past but my gosh if you look at my 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 um, my usage of FaceTime on my phone is probably up nine thousand percent in the last week, which just shows how you know we we still need that visual. Yeah, totally. Uh, let's talk about the technology. You talk about FaceTime, Zach. I know a lot of teachers are using this application called Zoom, mm-hmm. where they can go back and forth and do lessons and things like that. Uh, Rachel, what are you guys doing to to reach out and, and still maintain lessons? Uh, most of us are using Zoom. Some are using FaceTime. I think there might even be a couple that are on Skype. Um, but it's, it's really whatever the, the teacher and the families feel most comfortable with. Yeah. Now, are there any group classes at all that are happening with the School of Music, or is it all one-on-one? Uh, there are some group classes going on. Um, we haven't, we're kind of sticking away from the, the, uh, the bigger, more populated group classes, because just for trying to figure out how that would occur. But we've been doing flute group classes and uh, piano group classes. Again, it's, um, you know, Jeff Mancher leads our piano group classes, and he just, every day I get more ideas from him about what he wants to do. And it's, yeah. it's, it's great. It's a little overwhelming. It's kind of like, wow, where, where do we start? But Yeah, well, I yeah. imagine that the, the, the technology, and of course what you're forced to do and what you're able to do, it is also opening doors as to what you can do with the uh, the technology and the way that you continue to teach you know people that are that are there to learn something um in, in the world of education in general we see a lot going on with um homeschooling more or less or with video conferencing with teachers uh, virtual classes things like that in the state of Michigan where my kids live they don't do that specifically because uh, evidently uh, by law, they they aren't allowed to do online classes, but they still have great activities coming from their teachers on a daily or weekly basis, mm-hmm. you know, but it's it's all voluntary. Oh. So it's hard for me with the kids like, hey, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you want to play with Play-Doh for four hours or would you rather write a paper or do some Zern or do, you know, something like that? And and we all know what the answer is. So that's a I'm struggle. sorry, what is Zern? Zern is a, a mathematics website that teaches you math, and, and actually, well, clearly, well, clearly, I levels. need to go on Zern. Yeah. yeah I feel like well, <laughs> listen, I, I have learned that. so much. From you have Zern. Zerned so much. <laughs> yes, that is, that is a verb. It totally is a verb. I have Zerned <laughs> how to so do seriously. long division, which I had completely forgotten. Oh, with like the and, the thing. Yeah, and my ten year old was teaching me how to do it. The bracket. The bracket. bracket. Is that what it's yeah. called? Yeah. It's a bracket. The thing. A- again, Felicia making hand gestures on the radio. <laughs> yeah, but, we have uh, to divorce you from that. Yeah. But but that has been a challenge uh, as well. Lisa, do you, do you are are you kids doing like some kind of homeschooling type deal or online classes with their their regular school? Yeah, they are. They actually it seems seems like a pretty good program. Not as you know a virtual um, interactive as I thought it would be at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, but so they're mostly given a lot of assignments, and I, I do know some teachers are actually using Zoom and other things um, if they need to do a lesson. But it's usually, you know, a, sh- a short thing to kind of give them a heads up on how to do certain things. That's that's difficult with math, so I'm actually interested in that learn thing that you talked about. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that that's how they they had a lot of homework last week. Um, they actually were on um, uh, Khan Academy quite often. That's the name of it, right? Khan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is now. The Khan Academy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, I was questioning myself, but. Um, yeah, so they this this week are actually off uh, for spring break. So, you know, they're going to do their thing and probably not do so much homework nice. at, at home. Yeah. I'm not sure yet. But, um, yeah, so they've been – last week they were very, very busy pretty much during the whole school day. I did let them sleep in a little bit because I think Northview starts school so darn early. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so they, they were very busy, and, and um, I was pretty um, impressed with the work the teachers sent home. As long as they eat dinner from at home, everything's good. Exactly. Hey, Lisa, exactly. I, I, I just want to know, uh, since your kids are on spring break, how do they do virtual spring break? Do they have like 
piles of sand and then they they oh, FaceTime no, with their friends. This, this is Zach asking for a friend, right? No, he's, he's offering <laughs> ideas. Right. I mean, do, do no, they just bounce know. a beach ball back and forth in the living room? Well, you know, we'll see starting today because last week they were doing their homework, but I, we were actually supposed to be in Florida right now. And so seeing the snow last night and this morning is not quite so wet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Even the cold. <laughs> right. Yeah, just a little bit different. But I was thinking back to what you guys were talking about with um, the difference between our, our house and your house um, with the kids and, mm-hmm. and working at home. I remember it when they were little, and, oh, man, it's, it's really tough. But um, now the teenagers, so, you know, they pretty much stay in their rooms, so they're, they're easy at social distancing. <laughs> you might not see them until dinner time. <laughs> they, they have a big keep-out sign on the door, right? Yeah, pretty yeah. much, pretty much. Felicia, what are you? What, what's going on with you guys at home? I mean, as far as education goes, you have to come up with activities. Well, I mean, your your girls are pretty young. Yes, so. I have a kindergartner and I have uh, a one year old, and uh, my husband is a band director, and he. So I'm watching him at home trying to, you know, put together lesson plans, and um, we weren't sure if his students would respond and be responsive when he's like assigning homework and everything. And he's not rehearsing with the band online, though, is he? <laughs> no, I did suggest like a virtual band. And he's like, that sounds cool. Maybe if we didn't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then, uh, but yesterday he assigned something on, I think it was like Google Classroom or something like that. And then immediately he had like 15 students respond. It's it's like they, they're they they're waiting for the assignment. They're, looking they're really for looking forward to it, especially music mm-hmm. compared yeah. to mm-hmm. some of the other classes. So he's finding that to be very surprising and kind of, um, I guess, reassuring. It's too. good, yeah. So, I mean, it speaks to his appeal as a, as a teacher oh, yeah. as well. Super so nerdy. that's great. <laughs> <laughs> he owns it. <laughs> I, I just got a text from Michael Lang offering an abacus if any of us needs it. So <laughs> I think that somebody might be listening in the background. Yeah. Lisa. Yeah. Hey, Michael. I have a workload, Michael. Know, the funny thing is, I actually have an abacus. So, <laughs> yeah, which is why you need right to now. go on on Zern to figure out long yeah, division. Um, exactly. But but what do we do with all of this? I think it's it's interesting to think about you know the the situation that that Felicia just just mentioned, where you know kids are excited and kind of waiting for the assignment. Um, you know, we're taking music online, we're taking an instruction online, and I think we'd all agree that it's not the same as being in person. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that there's probably something that we lose from, you know, the, the social distancing of, of, uh, the live uh, interactions, of yeah. the live interaction. But, um, what do we gain from it? You know, if you, if you zoom forward a year and we're saying, you know, so it's good that we're back to face to face, um, education. But one thing we learned during the coronavirus outbreak was that we could blank. Like, what do you think could come from this? What, what additional, capacity is this going to give us you know from online instruction for for dance for for music for for your husband felicia what do you guys think yeah well i i think that for one thing and and felicia touched on this Mm -hmm. um students actually wanting to learn and wanting to participate right so this is kind of like don't underestimate them yeah Yeah. it's kind of like listening for instance a lot of people listen passively um, to music or what have you, it's in the background. They don't really make an effort, and and going to see a live performance where they actually are engaged and where they're bringing something to it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think in in the online learning environment, for it to work successfully, the students have to be engaged a, a little bit more than they may be, you know, in the classroom. Mm-hmm. I wasn't quite sure where I was going to go with that. That's probably not the best solution. Well, <laughs> you, you, you can't be the kid in the back row, yeah. who's, hiding, you know, doodling right. in the in the corner about his cat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that was me. You just described me perfectly there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not an expert on any of this. So I'm, uh, let me turn it over to somebody who is Rachel. That you're up. <laughs> I, oh, I, Lord. Yeah, I, I set it up for you, time for you to, to tee off, not to mix metaphors or anything. I'm sorry, but. I was in the back doodling a picture of my cat. What, Just what now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I am, I hope that we can take this sense of community and creativity out with us, um, you know, looking when we're a year into it. Um, just this kind of how can we help each other? How can we keep each other positive? Um, I, I guess that's what I'm. I'm really hoping that we can look back and say, "Remember when?" And how about we keep doing that? 
Yeah. Felicia's we, writing us notes. Sorry. Remember uh, when, like, <laughs> we say that now or we say that in the future? Remember when oh, like, we're in doing the future, it this way? Like, hey, you know, we used to have always these really great ideas. We used to come together and, mm-hmm. and just want to be a, a big team, a big musical family. And I don't know. I just hope that that sort of um, cooperation, collaboration continues. Do we see any families? We are back in person. Do we see families taking lessons together? Um, I because I uh, I'm thinking of a, a picture I saw um, on the Toledo Ballet of a family mm-hmm. doing um, doing a class together. I mean, are are there opportunities for for educational opportunities that that we we wouldn't um, otherwise have? And for example, having a a trio of uh, of kids from the same family in their pajamas doing ballet that they wouldn't have been doing before. Yeah, you know, it is actually exactly that you're, the picture you're talking about um, was it was a family that we have that had uh, three students take it our, at the studio and take ballet and tap and other things. But um, the class that they actually were in on the other day uh, via FaceTime was Michael. Um, he has a conditioning class on Saturday mornings, but he made it into uh, Qigong and uh, meditation uh, hour. And so these kids got, you know, they had access to a class that they've never been in. So I think, you know, it, it opens the door for other genres of not just dance, but these other classes that we offer to these kids that would never have that, you know, opportunity before. So I think that's really exciting. I was really excited to see all of them because I think the little one might be uh, probably four or so, maybe mm-hmm. four, seven, and ten is kind of the, the ages that I'm thinking that they are. So, you know, this also putting it online and putting it on our website, these kids can watch different classes that they don't normally have the option oh, to watch. Yeah. No. But I think that's really interesting. And, and dance is harder and, and for the teachers in this way because you know, it's very hands-on, and corrections are hands-on, um, touching the shoulders, you know, touching the legs, straightening the knee, all of these things that we do. So it also is going to be, we have to be innovative as teachers um, in how we're teaching and thinking outside of the box, and that's what creativity is. And I think this opens up, you know, a whole different world for us. And, you know, obviously it would be tough if it lasted for a long time, but we're all craving that social interaction, whether it's a dance class or a music class with a teacher or a group. So I think, you know, it, it's not ideal, but it, it's, it's exciting in a way to see where it will go. And, you know, I hope it doesn't go on for too long because, like I said, dance is very hands-on. Yeah. Um, but, but I'm seeing opportunities that kids are having right in their own home, you know, doing the, the class that Zach was talking about the other day. And I love that. Like, what kid normally would ever think about meditation or, or Qigong, you know, learning these, these skills, even if it's an hour, they've been exposed to it. Well, what is so, the age you know. range that, that you're working with as a ballet? Uh, we start classes at three um, for the pre-primary classes, and then we have adult students. We have we have students um, doing more uh, drop-in classes for the older, you know, but close to their 70s, that you know, wow. adults that are taking adult ballet. And, you know, we have not delved into those classes yet. And actually the teacher that teaches those has been out of town, um, so she's had subs. But like I said, we're off this week. So this week at the ballet, there are no classes. But yeah. next week, you know, it, it'll be the time to really start. Um, I have to look into Zoom, and there's another um, – another one called Blue Jeans that we've been using at the University of Michigan to teach classes. Um, you know, so I have to get the, the teachers up and running on those things. So that's my job this week is trying to figure out all of that technology that I have not delved into other than participating myself at U of M. Wow. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, age range from three to probably 70 years old. I, my, my, uh, my, my only question about these technologies is, is there a delay? I mean, I'm thinking about... Um, you know, if you're trying to coordinate a group, uh, a group instruction of any kind, if everybody's seeing it a little bit delayed, it wouldn't quite work. Are right. you guys seeing um, that? I have not seen the delay, but you know, this is really just starting. And my art classes at U of M, well, some of them are are bigger than others, but um, I have not seen a delay for those. Now we're not doing virtual dance classes there. We're doing more. We've brought in um, Broadway, our friends from, you know, our colleagues from Broadway, choreographers and um, directors, Anne Ranking, all these wonderful people, Cheetah Rivera, 
um, is hopefully one of them. So those are more like, you know, a regular classroom situation, and it's more of a um, Q&A kind of thing. So, Zach, I, I do know I'm in, um, or I'm trying to contact somebody that's been doing these classes, and I have not seen any delay um, as far as they've mentioned, but like I said, I'll be delving into it more in the next few days to try to get us up and running with the bigger classes, you know, because our classes, usually the average is probably around 10 to 15, and the younger classes are a little bit less than that. Um, so so that'll be interesting to see. And like Rachel said, worrying about the internet connection and, you know, how, how that will run. So those are yeah. all the unknown, but um, it's been working pretty well at U of M for, for those things. And I do, I have seen plenty of classes and yoga classes that my friends are teaching that it seems to be working without a delay. So, Well, yeah, like anything, you know, it's challenging, especially being a new uh, venture for you. And it sounds like you've got your work cut out for you this week, Lisa, preparing. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. Tech, you know, tech is not, not, I'm not the best at it. So um, I, I uh, will be leaning on resources. I mean, certain technology, I mean, it's, something that I'm, I've never used. So Maybe you can get your girls to help you out or, or your <laughs> yes, kids. They all, yeah, <laughs> I they, do go to them. Like, how do you do that? Yeah, they yeah. <laughs> You're, you're going to spend your spring break telling me how to set this up. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, like my 10-year-old teaching me long division. <laughs> you know? Right. Rachel, let's get you back in the conversation because, uh, you know, it's kind of ironic that, that it's music in our schools month, right, yeah. given that all the schools are closed. <laughs> Yeah. You want to talk a little bit about that and also talk about our um, the Music Educator o Award that's going on. That's still going on, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is still going on. Um, yeah. So it is a little unfortunate, but I am getting um, applications or, or essays. So basically the Outstanding Music Educator Award, um, you go onto our website and there will be a little form. And then you have to just write a short essay about why this person should be nominated. And I, um, I, I'm just so inspired reading these. Um, so there's still some time to apply, and we'll we'll pick a winner. I don't know how. I don't know who's going to do that because they're all great. I'll do it. And, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Perfect. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm going to give it to Felicia's husband because he he seems to be uh, doing pretty well, but you, he's probably disqualified, right? Oh yes, maybe you know, relation to somebody yeah. who works at the right. the organization. Um, but kind of piggybacking off of what uh, both Lisa and Rachel said, um, Lisa had mentioned how people are kind of like craving music, mm. dance, craving the arts in this time as we're all you know being holed up in our homes a little bit. And um, over the weekend, we had Elaine Trudell play uh, on his trombone, this like Telemann sonata. Yeah. And we expanded all the parts so that we had like a flute part, an oboe part, right, the, not the a kazoo print, part. Sorry, music. Brad. <laughs> yes, the music. The, print, the, uh, the, the printed music. music. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there yes. we go. See, I'm a little late on the buzzer because oh, I got to so reach all away. the way across <laughs> six feet away. <laughs> but what I've noticed in all the comments on social media are all of the former band and orchestra students who are like coming out of the work, woodwork um, wanting to play along with Elaine Trudell, which I thought was amazing. And I hope that out of all of this, that people, you know, are re-inspired to pick up their instruments, dust them off from middle school, high school, yeah. college and playing again. And really, that's a huge testament to all the teachers and educators that are out there who have instilled that sort of appreciation of music, of the arts in them so that it's it's really a lifelong love, you know? Yeah. So I'm hoping that for the future. Yay! <laughs> well done. We're going to have to stop right there because we're running out of time. And, and there's a lot more to say about this. We might address it in a future episode. But I, I do want to thank uh, Rachel Schultz, Director of Education and Community Engagement for the Toledo Symphony. Also, Toledo Ballet Artistic Director Lisa Marilang. Uh, both of you calling in today from home, social distancing. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for inviting. I also want to thank Felicia Canny and Zach Vassar, who are here uh, space six feet apart in the studio <laughs> with me as well. This program is a production of WGTE Public Media in collaboration with our sponsor, the Toledo Symphony, with generous support from the Rita Barber Kern Foundation. You can download episodes of our program as a podcast by going to our website at wgte.org slash lab. You can also subscribe to us through your podcast app of choice, including Apple and Google Podcasts. 
Don't forget, you can check out everything that's going on with the symphony, especially in the age of coronavirus. You can look at videos there of other concerts as well. That's at ToledoSymphony.com. Also keep up to date with their various social media outlets on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm Brad Cresswell. You've been listening to Toledo Symphony Lab from FM 91.